Did you know Graham Henry almost chucked the job in and that he suffered from depression? Well, that's what we discovered when we sat down with the great rugby coach for a chat this week. He doesn't suffer fools, Graham Henry. He's confident, some say arrogant and moody. Journalists even called him grumpy. Still, he's the last person you'd expect to suffer depression. But as a just published book reveals, Graham Henry's coaching career took him to the depths of despair to a point where he nearly gave it all away. Tonight, Sir Graham opens up to Mark Chrysler. The time has come to say what we really thought, what I really thought. You just run out of petrol. And that's a horrible feeling. Just how low did you get? I hit the wall. The man we all know as Ted struggles to talk about himself. We yeah. dwelled on this long enough. But tonight, he tackles his demons. Oh, we all oh, know call it. Me, yeah. Call me a grumpy bastard before. I never used the word grumpy. He's not so grumpy at his holiday home on Waiheke. Put it up. And... But he still likes to be the boss. And yeah. that, that Pahutakawa there, if you look at that Pahutakawa camera, um, that's the oldest Pahutakawa on the island, about 500 years old apparently. That tree's older than you. Oh, a wee bit, not too much older. Just a Sir years. Graham Henry can be impatient. Have you, is that a question or are you no. moving on? Um, September. But these days, the smile is no longer upside down. Okay. Did you have any idea you're such a babe magnet? <laughs> Winning a World Cup can do wonders for your public image. But as a new book reveals, that was just the end of a long and bumpy road. The headmaster who became a ringmaster. A rugby coach who rarely lost. You were quite a cocky guy. I wouldn't say cocky. I think that's a, that's a stretch. One of the reports at the time said you rubbed a lot of people up the wrong way. I was busy. I was very busy. You know, we had a young family. I was, I was a headmaster of a, of, a, of a secondary school that I was proud of. And um, I was coaching a, one of the biggest provincial rugby sides in, in New Zealand. Loved it. Um, enjoyed trying to be successful with a group of people, trying to create something that people were proud of. At his side for 42 years, his wife, Raywin. 42 years of marriage, but only been home for 21, so that's, that's the ideal for a good marriage, I'd say. <laughs> I don't know if we should put that in. No, we might leave that one. <laughs> <laughs> Some have said it should have been Raywin that got the knighthood. He, he, he said, think people think you're grumpy. Is that, and that'll be on the TV. Are you, is he grumpy? Did you say, no, I'm not. <laughs> did you say, no, I'm not. No, I didn't <laughs> deny that I was grumpy. I said, yeah, that's probably correct. Sometimes. Is he grumpy sometimes? Sometimes. His patience has certainly been tested. By the end of the 90s, his Auckland side just kept winning, and he decided he was ready for the All Blacks. If I'd been given a, a positive indication from New Zealand rugby that that was a possibility, I would have stayed. But I didn't get that. Instead, Wales made him a million dollar offer. The New Zealand Rugby Union's reaction? They threw their toys out of the cot and introduced the Graham Henry law. If you want to coach the All Blacks, then you have to be coaching here in New Zealand. What a ridiculous law. Now, that was a knee reaction, a, a, a knee-jerk reaction to me going to Wales, uh, which I thought was bizarre. Pettier still, the Auckland Rugby Union. They took away your car park <laughs> and your seat in the stand. And, and two seats in the stand and the car park, uh, that which I had been given to for life. That seems incredibly petty. I think it was jealousy at the time, personally. There were a million reasons to be jealous. The Welsh deal made him the highest paid coach in the world. It's a wonderful moment for us uh, to bring him into our midst. Money that bought him his Waiheke retreat, 
Ironically, it's the island's old schoolhouse. Would you have ever been able to have a place like this if you'd stayed a teacher? You know the answer to that. <laughs> so this is the house the Pain of Wales bought you? Dead right. This is the house that the Pain of Wales bought me. <laughs> and I've got very fond memories of those times. I also learnt a lot. Mm. And I also went through a bit of pain. Mm. Henry had a point to prove to the bosses at the New Zealand Rugby Union. And he did. Initially, we, we had a run of 11 games on the trot for a while, which was lovely. The Grateful Welsh dubbed him the Great Redeemer. I really enjoyed it. You know, I really enjoyed... Uh, it was the only other country in the world where rugby is a national game. But it was 24-7, and he was about to bite off more than he could chew. Second try for the Lions. Coaching the British and Irish Lions team to Australia. Should you have taken that Lions job? No. No, not in hindsight, but my ego was such that I I just wanted to stick it up a few people back in New Zealand. <laughs> the ego was more brittle than many realised. He has never talked publicly about this, but Graham Henry was about to crack up. It's what John Kerwin calls depression. Here it is for Burke. Infighting and bitterness had marred the tour. Another one for the Wallabies. For the first time in his career, Henry was a loser. The great redeemer was all out of redemption. It wasn't only a challenge coaching-wise, but it was, a, it was a huge challenge mentally. Absolutely exhausted, he tipped over into deep depression. I hit the wall. I hit the wall after the Lions tour and, um, and knew that I had to get out. You know that you, you can't do the job. You know that the, the, the fire in the belly is not there. And no matter what you do, you know, you work your butt off, it's not there. You just, you just, you've just run out of petrol. And that's a horrible feeling. Had you ever seen him down before? Not like that, no. It's a subject he still struggles to talk about. We dwelled on this long enough. Fair enough, fair he'll, enough. He'll make me depressed again. The way he dealt with it was to leave Wales. And it was the right decision. Um, and... Otherwise, I would have died there as a rugby coach. Did you think at the time that was it for your rugby coaching? Um, <laughs> always there's a little man in the back of your head saying, well, you're going to do this thing again one day. When we come back, Graham Henry gets the All Blacks job he'd always coveted, but is horrified at what he finds. It disgusted me, and I didn't think it was acceptable. Returning to New Zealand from Wales was like emerging from a long, dark tunnel for Graham Henry. Well, what's it like when you come back out of here? Well, I'm not out there yet. I don't know. I haven't been out there. He was starting to feel like his old self again. But I remember coming back here. When I came back from Wales, and I sat in the stand and I thought, Jesus, it's great to be at Eden Park. It just, just felt comfortable. You know, it just felt like home. And as Graham Henry recovered from depression, the rest of the country slipped into despair. The All Blacks had crashed out of yet another Rugby World Cup. And guess who was sitting in the crowd in Sydney? I was thinking, this may be my chance to get back into international rugby. And maybe this is my chance to fulfil a lifetime ambition, a lifetime dream of coaching the All Blacks. I have to be honest. We are not kind to losing All Black coaches. For many, nothing less than a public flogging will atone for World Cup defeat. Why would you want to do that job? I was in the blood. It was part of me. I was hugely ambitious. It was a pinnacle of, of what I'd aimed for for the last 30 years. The rugby union had backtracked on the Graham Henry law and Ted got the job. What he found horrified him. It disgusted me and I didn't think it was acceptable. A culture of heavy binge drinking. This was compulsory drinking. And, and making drinking compulsory for anybody is unacceptable. And this was an all-black New Zealand rugby team. Totally unacceptable. It was pretty bad because um, some of the states of the boys f finished up in just 
you know, it wasn't what uh, what we were about. They had inherited in a culture they were continuing on. We just changed the culture. What did you do? We stopped it. Ted too had to change. For years he'd been an old school tub thumping rugby coach. His new captain broke it to him. Says you know. Who are our team talks for? Are they for you, go for you, or are they for us? Because they're really not helping us. Uh, I was depressed for a week. You talk about depression in Wales. The culture was changed. Henry changed too, and the All Blacks took their game to a new level. <laughs> Tri Nations titles, Grand Slams, record scores. <laughs> they were red hot favourites by the time the 2007 World Cup rolled around. We were the um, favourites to win that competition. We'd won 19 out of the last 20 internationals prior to going into the Rugby World Cup. Um, we were expected to win. But lying in wait, again, were the French. Oh, you feel empty. You feel empty because there's nothing you can do. It's over. Henry's pain was our national shame. He'd presided over the All Blacks' worst ever result at a World Cup. Publicly, he refused to blame the referee and won an international sports award for the way he handled defeat. Better side won on the day, and a lot of credit goes to them. How do you take the pressure off these young fellas so that they don't go through um, the criticism they could go through? We made no excuses. We just took it on the chin and said we didn't play as well as we should have, the French played well, better than we thought they would, and we didn't get the bounce of the ball. But you had strong doubts. Oh, hell yeah. When the Lions lost, Henry spiralled into depression. This time, he grabbed a tape of the game and obsessively played it over and over again, taking copious notes. There in front of him were at least 40 infringements committed by the French that went unpunished. The All Blacks didn't get a penalty for the last 60 minutes of the game and attacked over 70 per cent of that time. Now that's, that's impossible, but it wasn't impossible on that particular day. Well, the French have come through and played that on the deck. It is only now, five years later, that he can talk publicly about it. It made me physically ill to see what I was viewing. Um, we just got sawn off by the officials in the game, and that's the major reason we lost the game. The ref? Yeah. So shocked was he by referee Wayne Barnes... Well, Mr Barnes is only looking at one team at the moment... ..that Henry suspected sports betting had played a part. You thought this was rigged? I asked the Rugby Union and the International Board of whether there was any, any laws or any system that they use to to look at bizarre games and look at the possibility of sports betting. With the officials, was it cheating or incompetence? Well, I guess that's why you have a, have a system of analysing those things. If you'd had a system of analysing, maybe you'd come to a result and I could answer that question. Officials told him to shut up or he'd never coach the All Blacks again. The players were looking at me. How's Ted going to handle this? He's under pressure. So is he going to stand up or is he going to run away? So I had to stand up because that's what I've been asking them to do for the last four years. It's still debated today, should Graham Henry have kept his job as All Black coach? Controversially, the rugby union said yes. Destiny will be played out at Eden Park. What is it about this ground? I think you grew up here, didn't you? Didn't we? Eden Park, 23rd of October, 2011. New Zealand versus France, the Rugby World Cup final. Henry and his team sat on the bus on the way to the game, unable to believe what they were seeing. Jock Hobbs, bless him. His statement about this is a, a stadium of four and a half million people, and his words came to life. And then you get into the last 20 minutes of the final, and it's a dogfight. Oh, the drama. 
20 horrendous minutes where the All Blacks clung desperately to a one-point lead. 20 minutes, All Black captain Richie McCaw called the greatest 20 minutes of his life. Was it the greatest 20 minutes of your life? No. No, we went through hell, really. It's over. Rugby's golden prize is All Black again. At the end of that game, were you happy or relieved? Both. I, I felt very peaceful and I, I was just delighted to spend that time with my wife, Layla, who's been quite outstanding. Makes me emotional to talk about it, even now. Why? Well, I guess I'm a silly old bugger. <laughs> And occasionally, that silly old bugger returns to Eden Park, even though they still haven't given him back his car park or seats in the stand. A lot of people say, gee, you're looking relaxed these days. Perhaps I was pretty uptight when I was coaching the All Blacks. I feel very comfortable because I don't have to win anymore. It's been done. And, and that's a great feeling. Yeah, those revelations are remarkable, aren't they? Uh, Henry's book, The Final Word, is penned by Bob Hart and is on sale this week.